Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going over the DS3231 which is a low cost real time clock. It has a built in battery as you can see which is a CR2032 battery, it's a 3 volt battery that basically lets you keep up the time even after you remove the main power to the device from VCC. Uh, this RTC or real time clock uh, will keep up seconds, minutes, hours, days, the date, month, year, etc. It will even uh, keep the date at the end of the month based on the month in which you're in automatically adjusting for months that have less than 32 days. And it will even, you know, correct for leap years. So years in which you have a 29th of February. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the data sheet for this DS3231. So we saw it communicates with an Arduino or any microcontroller via I2C. Uh, we can see also a operating voltage between 2.3 and 5.5 with a typical of 3.3 volts. I'll now show you how to wire your DS3231 to an Arduino Uno. So as you can see we have the VCC connected to the 5 volt output of the Arduino, the ground connected to the ground on the Arduino, and then we have the SEL pin from the DS3231 connected to the SEL pin on the Arduino Uno, and the same thing for the SDA of the DS3231 to the same output from, or pin, sorry, from the Arduino Uno. So it's as simple as that for an application like this one. Now the next step will be to start the programming for our Arduino Uno. Before we get there, we will need to download a library for our DS3231. For this example, I chose to go to rinkydinkelectronics.com precisely and download the library. As you can see here, we have the DS3231.zip. We go ahead and download it. Now that it finished downloading, we can actually go ahead into Arduino IDE. We'll go to the sketch section, include library, and then click on add zip library. Find the file that you just downloaded, open, and it will be included now as a library within Arduino IDE. Now that you have properly set up the library in Arduino, we can move to the next step. So, before I get too deep into this, uh, let me explain the two codes <clears throat> that we'll be going through. So first will be a clock setup code and the other one is the clock read. So think about it this way. If you plug a new clock into your electrical outlet, the first thing you would do is set up uh, the time. Once you set up the time and sync it up to the current time, you're ready to use the clock and all you would do is read the time. So similarly here, what we're going to do is tell Arduino the time and date, uh, deploy or build that code into the Arduino, which will send it to the DS3231, and then we'll be done. And then after that, all we have to do is send a new code to the Arduino for what we want to do, which is reading the actual date and time. So let's do that now. So, step one, I'll go through the code for setting up the clock. We'll call out the include of the library. We will define the inputs that we want to write to in the Arduino. In this case, we want to use the RTC function, and we want to define that they're going to be connected to SDA and SCL on the Arduino. Uh, and now we're going to set up a serial connection, at 9600. We'll begin RTC. And now we're just going to set the day of the week. This is saying Saturday, set the time, and set the date. And that ends the void setup loop. And then, uh, sorry, the void setup, and then on the loop we leave it blank. So, after that, uh, you know, we'll deploy the code. And then we'll go back to clock read. So when we do that, 
we will essentially be running this code. As you can see, we will no longer be running this. This is going to be commented out because we don't want to reset the time every time we you know, start the Arduino. Otherwise, it will be like resetting the clock to whatever date you had written here, and that's not what you want. After you set it up, you just want to be able to read the time. In this example, what we'll be doing is printing to our serial uh, basically a string with the day of the week, uh, a string with date, and then a string with the time. And we'll be sending that every 1000 milliseconds or basically uh, once a second. So all you have to do now essentially is connect to Arduino and then upload so that it runs the code. Once you have done that, come back, run this one, and now we'll see what happens when you do. Now for this one, I had already set it up uh, a few days ago, so you might be reading a different time than what I set up here, but essentially it should work the same way. So I upload. All right, so now that we're done uploading, we can go ahead and open serial monitor to see that it's now printing uh, the day of the week is Tuesday, the date in which it has it in day, month, year format, so the 24th of November 2020, and then it's showing the time military format as 9 o'clock uh, with 19 minutes and 30 seconds. 31, 32, etc. So, essentially, the idea will be that I could turn off or unplug the Arduino, plug it back on, and it would keep track of this time. Because essentially, as we talked earlier, our DS3231 has a built in battery, and I want to keep track of time. That's why, even though I didn't reset up with the other code, the setup code, I was still able to simply run this code that is for reading uh, and get the time that I had set up, I guess we can see from here, 10 days ago. So This covers the main functionality of the DS3231 real-time clock. There are many applications in which you could use it. Uh, you could use this as an alarm. You could use it for many projects in which you need a specific action to take place, either a specific day of the week or day of the month uh, or time, you know, on a specific day or every day of the week or only weekdays, etc. Uh, and even if something as simple uh, as showing the date and time in a LCD screen. Here we're showing a 1602 LCD screen showing both the time and the date. We won't be showing the details or Arduino code or anything like that for this example, uh, but at least we'll now show you the schematic, just so you can kind of get a sense of multiple things that you could do with the DS3231 RTC. Now, the schematic uh, for the breadboard shown here uh, is for the brief example that I just flashed on the screen. Uh, as you can see, we have four inputs left. That means that we are running the LCD as a 4-bit operation rather than 8-bit. Um, nevertheless, you can still go ahead and um, you know use both lines of text as you kind of saw in the video. So we would essentially wire for this LCD uh, inputs D4 through D7, which are these four green wires, going into four digital inputs on the Arduino Uno. Uh, then you would essentially, then you would essentially um, wire the rest of the power uh, inputs. As you can see, we have here uh, the main ones going to the positive, which are the same, are connected to the VCC on your um, RTC. A bunch of other ones going to ground, and then two of the main data cables going to. In here, I have digital inputs ten and nine. Uh, we also use a potentiometer, as you can see here on the screen, uh, mainly to dial in 
the contrast that you you would notice on the screen to basically control the resistance uh, such that you have the right um, visibility of that LCD. Once you dial it in, you could technically use a multimeter, measure the resistance, and then replace that with an actual resistor for a more permanent setup. But recommend using a potentiometer uh, for determining that right resistance to begin with. Other than that, we have the same connections on the real-time uh, clock. VCC and ground as talked previously. And then you have your SCL and SDA. And also 5 volts to the main rail on the breadboard and then connecting to ground. So, I'll let you look into specifics. There are plenty of other examples uh, that you can search online. So, um, have fun. Again, thanks for uh, joining this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much.